Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way. Have a seat with me today one more time in the corner booth. We're celebrating episode 124 of the Irish Roots Cafe genealogy and history show. Sweeney, clear that floor. Katie, bar the door. Molly, put on another pot of Irish tea today. Uh, bring out those Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Another full house today. Not a chair to spare. Hey, I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. And you can reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com anytime. And check out the written show notes on my blog. Hey, and now we've also got a blog right there on... Uh, uh, Irish Central, so you can check that out too. We're just developing that whole uh, uh, procedure right now, so uh, it's going to be fun. Come along and join us. And remember, you can search all of our books and videos on the webpage, and you can phone 816 256 3360 to leave your comments on my recorder. Try it, you'll like it. Hey, you know that you can click in and listen to this podcast live. Just like you're doing now for all of our new podcasts and our old podcasts, we've put in the uh, archived area, the members area, but uh, we're thinking about bringing those out of retirement and making them available to everybody for a, a small pittance, maybe 99 cents. I don't know, uh, but we've got a whole new series of podcasts also scheduled to come on. So uh, we're trying to figure out a way to keep it all moving in the same direction. Now, among today's topics... Man is the Irish family name of the day, or Mahan, or Mahan, or however you want to say it. Or Macman. Hmm, interesting. Uh, number two, Man Wolves of Ossery by Joyce. Number three, Australian Family History Directory. Number four, Federal U.S. Census Search. Number five, Irish Home Run Champ before Babe Ruth. Number six, Irish Arrivals in Atlantic Canada, a book. And uh, number seven, Ali, Muhammad Ali's Irish ancestor. Uh, plus, we've got uh, Montana Irish links and uh, tips on how to make your Irish family tree chart in five minutes. And uh, guess who's related to Brian Baru? <laughs> Hey, let's talk about our notes for this week. There's always seems to be ha more things happening here all the time. Uh, number one, yet like I've said before, we're catching up on a very busy year, and it's nice to stay home for just a bit. And uh, I tell you what, Charlotte, North Carolina, maybe next year for your fest. That sure sounds like fun, and uh, wish you could have been there this year, but just didn't have enough notice. Uh, so if anybody does want us to come out for a festival next year, be sure to get a hold of us ahead of time. Uh, hey, Butte, Montana, it was good to hear more about your festival here in the last week or so, too. And you know we might add another festival to our, uh, our to our own little timeline here. Uh, we've been consulting and giving talks for eleven years at the Dublin Irish Festival, and well, you know what? We've been appearing for uh, and consulting uh, with crowds and individuals and giving talks for over thirty years now. And we've also got a display of genealogy works for all the counties in Ireland. And, of course, some of those classic Irish histories like the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters or the History of Ireland by Geoffrey Keating. We've got a whole lot of resources we've pr produced in the last few years, and uh, we can bring those along, too, if you think they'd help. At number two, October 16th, the Quiet Man Irish Tour is still available. I just got through talking with Peter Adams. Uh, that's going to be an interesting time, to say the least. I hope he doesn't fill up. Uh, or I hope he gets enough. I don't know which is the case, but the we have a Facebook page for the Quiet Man Tour. If you want to see how it's going or sign up as a maybe or a, I'd really want to go, uh, let us know what the status is. And uh, you can check that on Facebook. Just uh, click in there for a Quiet Man under events, I guess is how you do it, or Quiet Man Tour. At number three, our enhanced version of the Irish Roots Cafe Genealogy and History Podcast has been okay, but uh, something has happened to the uh, extra pictures and links we put in there. I don't know what happened. We don't, they, they just sort of disappeared. We've got that one master one that comes up. And uh, if anybody knows how to correctly 
uh, post that on iTunes, uh, send me an email and let me know what I'm doing wrong. And for that matter, I still have never been able to get up the album art uh, for a couple of our podcast feeds. Uh, the podcasts are just fine, but they have this album art you can put up. And uh, on a couple of our podcasts, I don't know how to put them up there. And, uh, you know, I asked my webmaster and they say, boy, I don't have a clue. This is really puzzling. Well, you know, that's the same problem I'm having. <laughs> so if you know how, please pass that word along. I'd like to clear that up. Uh, number four. Uh, hey, I told you about the uh, uh, Dublin Irish Academy uh, with uh, Neve Parsons. And uh, she did some singing there. And she actually gave us a uh, a listing of maybe 10 or 15 songs, a little repertoire there of how to sing them. And uh, I recorded those on my recorder and converted it to MP3. And this is just for the students in that session. So if you're interested, uh, just let me know and I'll send you an MP3 file. And uh, uh, you can hear that. The recording came out okay. You could hear some uh, tin whistles in the background now and then. But uh, I think you'd enjoy it. And uh, like I said, we're still going on with the uh, Irish Roots Cafe blog on irishcentral.com. So if you're over there, be sure to take advantage of it. Well, now let's move on to the books of the month. Well, let me see. This month we're going to pick County Clare. We've got a lot to cover. I've got a special feature coming up here, so uh, we won't give many excerpts from those books. We'll just tell you there's two Two books that I've written from the Irish Families Project that cover just County Clare. And one is County Clare, Ireland, Genealogy and Family History Notes. And that's a spiral-bound book I wrote for researchers. And uh, I included uh, the things most often looked at when people came to visit the library here. Uh, you know, most popular names in the 1800s, uh, popular names sometimes in this uh, 18th century or 17th century I uh, just filled it up with all kinds of things and a map and place names and uh, sometimes a few name sketches of some families from the county. Uh, and then the second book from that series is The Families of County Clare, Ireland. And that's the hardbound book, and it's uh, uh, larger, and uh, it's loaded with uh, uh, family name history type things, whatever I could find, be it large or small. So those are two there, and they're both on my webpage, and of course, they're both on Amazon, so... You can take your pitch, pick however you want it. Uh, now I think we're going to come up to our special feature for today. And what is it? It's about beginning your Irish family history search. And this is part two of a 10-part series. And this one is on making your family tree chart in five minutes or less. How and why. Hey, we're going to lead it off by telling you about, uh, I was reading, uh, oh, must have been 20 years ago, I was reading about Brian Baru and how people were doing pedigrees and how the kings of Europe all like to link together sometimes. And I found out that, uh, good gosh, the queen mum had listed herself as part of Brian Baru's family tree. I guess that's to prove that they had the, uh, perhaps had the right to rule in the area. And uh, the king of England also uh, claim descent through a separate line. And, uh, of course, Brian Brew was the high king of Ireland from 1002 to about 1014 or so. And King George VI tied his line to uh, a granddaughter of Brian Brew. And the queen mother herself claimed uh, family ties to Brian's son, Ty, or T. And they may have been a bit creative in some of that research, however, but... Uh, We'll let that go for now. That's a story for another day. You ever have people tell you that? Uh, maybe your parents or an uncle? Well, yeah, that's a story for another day, son, I'll tell you. But right now, let's get to work. Now, your five-minute family tree chart. Well, today we're going to just take a note of how and why you need to start a family tree chart for your family. And on, although you may indeed be related to the high kings of Ireland and antiquity, you may find more satisfaction in that rebel who procured the landlord's daughter and escaped to America or Australia. A lot of fun tales there. I've heard stories of folks who stole the birthday cake of the uh, landlord and had to jump on a ship. But you know what? They might have done something other than steal a birthday cake, but uh, who knows? Hey, but so you do this, what's going to happen? Well, if you put your family tree down on paper, 
Uh, it's really important, and it's your very first official task that I'm going to give you. And the big picture is going to help everybody understand family relationships and maybe get them a little more interested in the family and the family tree, and they might end up helping you a little bit more. You know, if you can see your own little picture there on that or, or, or name right on that sheet and who, how you're related, uh, it makes a difference. So once you make this copy of the family tree, uh, make copies of it and hand that out to everybody in the family and uh, anybody else who might be able to help or take it with you to the library and ask for help from a researcher or a librarian. Doesn't matter how simple it is, all you got to do is start and send it to all those who might be able to add or correct information for you. And it might get you some unexpected help over the time that you're doing this research. And you know what I sure remember is I was starting to fill in my family tree chart by hand the very first time I drew one up. Uh, uh, it really helped keep me on track years later because I had to deal with uh, two Mikes who were married to two Bridgets, and we had the last name there, and uh, you didn't know which Mike O'Laughlin you were talking about or which Bridget O'Laughlin you were talking about. So it really came in handy, and that's happened more than once to me. And just remember, you don't need a computer. Just a pen or a pencil and a sheet of paper to start. Uh, you can get as complicated as you want later. They've got some tremendous uh, computerized family tree charts if you want to get into that. And, uh, you know, they've also got uh, free pre-printed family tree charts online. You can just download them and print them off. Uh, that's where you just fill in the names and dates and they draw the little lines for you. Uh, I'm going to give you a place on the blog here, a free place to hit and... Uh, They've got some of those free charts. And uh, you know what you got to do? When I first drew that one I was talking about, I just drew it by hand and I used a square to show uh, men and a circle to show women. And just start with your mother and father right on the same line there. Put your uh, mother on the left, father on the right, vice versa, just as long as you get it down. And draw a line between mom and dad, left to right. And then draw a line from that line you just drew downwards and Show yourself for your sisters and your brothers. That's the beginning of your family tree chart. Now, above your parents are going to be your grandparents, and uh, you just keep going up and down like that, and you'll pretty soon you'll be surprised what you're learning. And uh, I've got a few more links on the uh, blog that are going to help you. One's a pedigree chart, uh, number two, we're going to call it, and that's from Wikipedia. And uh, then I also, for those of you who are experts and are sitting here saying, well, I've already done all this, you know, a lot of people still are confused about how to put down a first or a second or a third cousin on a family tree chart. And I've also got a link on the uh, blog for putting the first, second, and third cousins on the family tree chart. So you just got to do it. You get the idea. The important thing is to start right now. Keep it simple. Uh, get fancy and use great computer programs anytime you want, but you don't have to. Uh, they've even got spots for photographs and all kinds of additional information to help you put that family history together. Uh, just remember, the Queen of England traced herself back to the O'Briens before the age of computers, and we're confident that you can too. Hey, in simple English, this is what you got to do. Draw out your family tree chart the best you can. Make copies, send it to all the family members and interested persons, Keep it and add to it as you go along, and as you update it, give it to people who are interested and they can follow your progress and help you out as you go. Now, next, what do you have to do? That's the end of the five-minute lesson, but your next step might take a little longer. You've got to look for the dates of birth, death, marriage, and uh, the obituary notices. Now, you're going to find, look, that would mean birth certificates, uh, church records, uh, newspapers, you, you know, you've got to look for that kind of thing. And, you know, the local library can sure point you in the right direction to local records. Uh, and, you know, once you find those dates out for e each person that you're looking for, put those on the chart and fill it in and you'll have a renewed sense of accomplishment. And, uh, yeah, like I said, that might take more than five minutes. Uh, I won't be telling you that it might take a lifetime, but some people choose to spend a lot of time doing this because it's fascinating. It's a connection not just with your family, but with history and world history and uh, all the events that have taken place over time. And you might be surprised how many lines you're related to. And it might be more countries than just Ireland.
or Ireland and Germany and Scotland and Wales and England, you'd be surprised. I, the, the other day, somebody was related to, to uh, uh, an Italian who had come up into Ireland, and that didn't happen a lot, but it did happen. And uh, that does it for the uh, uh, family history chart lesson, and we're going to move on. But right now, remember, I've still got a blog reader up and a podcast. The blog reader is sort of like a computerized uh, reader of this podcast. We're trying that out. And, of course, then I have the real podcast, which is a real human voice uh, with real human cadence in it. We've got them both up there. So the reason I say that, if you're looking for the podcast and you're listening to the blog reader, it's not quite the same. The podcast is much more real because it's my real voice. And uh, I'm the host, and I go into some things not included on the blog in the podcast. So uh, be sure to check it all out. And uh, you know where you can get it at. That's at irishroots.com. And what do we got now? Coming up, you know, later in this podcast, we've got a source for man wolves of ossery in Ireland. And that's from a uh, a good, reliable source, at least a very historical source. But now you know what time it is. It's time to raise our eyes skywards, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. Number one, uh, William G. Potter of Lansing, Michigan. Your county myth, myth <laughs> genealogy has shipped. We wouldn't want to call your genealogy a myth. No, it's county meath. And let me see. Next, Glenn Warren of Maple Ridge, British Columbia, Canada. Your Irish Knights has shipped. Uh, that's a book. Uh, then Thomas Bergen of Silver Spring, Maryland. Your Kings and Queens Genealogy Notes and uh, the Beginner's Guide to Irish Family Research has shipped. Uh, Ryan Mulvey of San Diego, your County Cavan book and your Book of Irish Families Great and Small has shipped. Uh, Mrs. Jensen of Ipswich, Suffolk in the UK, your Genealogical History of the Malaysian Families of Ireland has shipped. And lastly here, uh, Martin M. Murray of Falkirk in the United Kingdom. Uh, welcome as a new member searching the great-grandparents' families who originated in County Down, and that was around Newcastle, Dundrum, and Kilku. And he's also got there, let me see, Murray, Smith, King, and Burns. What a load. Hey, that reminds me. Thanks to you all for everything you do, you members, and, and when you get a book or, or sign up for a membership, and uh, that's helping me keep this pad, podcast going plus all the others, and we're going to be doing some on uh, historical topics and some on the county, so uh, I want you to stay tuned for, for that. We've got some new things happening here that really nobody else is doing that I know of, uh, but you know what we're moving on to now? That's the Irish family name of the day. Well, the Irish family name of the day is going to be Mahan, Mahan, or MacMan, uh, uh, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And that's going to be in honor of member uh, uh, Hannah Lee Mann and great-grandfather William Henry Mann and great-great-grandfather Benjamin F. Mann. And uh, we picked MacMan because it's just uh, the most popular form uh, or possible form of that name, early form of it. And relating, related spelling of the name, of course, are sometimes McGinn or Mahan or Mahone or uh, uh, Man or just, uh, you just, there's all kinds. You can stick an E at the end of the name. You can uh, uh, make that O at the end, an A, just like all these others. You can have a G-H there or just a H uh, for Mahan, M-A-G-H-A-N. So keep your eyes open like we do on all these spellings of Irish family names. And that belongs to a lot of variant spelling groups, which means it can, uh, you could be related to a lot of families and you might want to take a DNA test to figure out which one. Uh, these are variant spelling groups number 1168, 1169, 1426, 1534, 2515, and maybe a couple of more. And those are taken from the master guide to the various spellings of Irish family names. Well, let's take a little bit look at the uh, the history of the name MacMan, and that's from the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small. That's the master volume to the uh, 
Irish Families Project, a 34-book set that I put together on Irish Families, one, one book at least for every county. Uh, now, you know, there's like, it, like with so many Irish family names, there's two great separate and distinct families of the McMahon name found in Ireland. And the first are well-known, and they're the McMahons of Clare, also known as the McMahons of Thoman. And the second group is the McMahons of the Old Territory of Oriel uh, from the 13th century. Now, there may be more, but those are two we're sort of sure of. And Keating History gives the family and uh, shows them uh, as succeeding to the chieftainship of Corcobaskin, where they were lords, and they ruled the baronies of Moyarta and Clonderlaw in Clare, all the way down to the reign of Elizabeth. And they were a branch of the O'Briens there, descended from who? Brian Boru. That means the queen tied right into that line. Hmm, very interesting. And it's said that they're not related to the McMahons of Ulster and County Monaghan. And don't be saying that they are, or you might be ending up in some trouble. When the Mac prefixed is dropped, like it is today by our member, uh, the name of Mahan or Mahan uh, appears, and it can represent totally unrelated families to McMahon, as well as being McMahon with a Mac dropped. Uh, in 1659, we take a look, and the name was pretty well uh, widespread, being in a lot of counties, and uh, got those listed in the book. And uh, just the plain old Mahan was a principal name of County Clare and found in Dublin at that time. Now, the 1890 birth index shows Mahan in Dublin and Galway with MacMahan in Clare, Monaghan, Limerick, and Dublin. And you know what they say that name comes from? It comes from the Irish word for bear. Now, that would have fit old Ed McMahon, wouldn't it? He was a big bear kind of fella. Could give you a real good bear hug. So that might be a key to something, huh? You think? You got any big ones in your family? That might just tell you you're one of the McMahons. Well, let's take a quick look at the Irish family coats of arms from the Irish Book of Arms. And what a, boy, we hit the jackpot today. We've got three illustrated Mahan arms given in the Irish Book of Arms, including those of Strokestown and of Galway. And uh, the oldest of them shows a lion on the shield. And one of the newer ones shows the ostrich. And it also shows the Mahan Pakenham arms uh, illustrated in the book. So that's interesting to study. And what else do we have coming up in this episode? Did you know that some Irish nine-year-olds have cell phones? And did you, did, did you know how many of them? Place your bets right now on a percentage. How many Irish nine-year-olds have cell phones? I'm going to have that answer in just a little bit. Uh, let's take one more crack at Mahan. Uh, the free master index search of Irish names on my webpage at irishroots.com finds the family 198 times. And uh, we've got a link to that in the blog. And I'll just pull six or seven of them here. Uh, T. Mahan, given in the Irish families on the California Trail book. Uh, o. Mahan and Mac Mahan are given in the Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters. Uh, M. Mahan in uh, County Clare Genealogy and Family History Notes. D. and M. Mahan in County Limerick Genealogy and Family History Book. And N. Mahan in County Roscommon Genealogy and Family History. And Mahan of Killinura in Families of County Limerick, Ireland. Okay. And uh, Patrick Mahan is given in the Journal of the American Irish Historical Society, Volume 26, and that, uh, that series of books, that, that's just loaded with Irish history. Now, the websites of the week. Well, we've got, uh, what do we have here? Number one, uh, Mahan databases, passenger lists, etc., uh, we've got a link for that uh, page. It's on distantcousin.com, but we got the exact link on our web page. There's like a hundred letters in that uh, address, so I won't read them off here. Uh, number two, I told you we were going to talk about or tell you a link to the Man Wolves of Ossery in Ireland. Boy, this could be a sci fi show, couldn't it? But that's from The Wonders of Ireland by P.W. Joyce in 1911. And Joyce was a respected writer, so. Uh, 
This is a legend that had held plenty of force there for a while. If you're interested in that sort of thing, you should look it up. Hey, and there's a hat tip to Liffy Rivers on Twitter for passing that one on to us. Uh, number three, free U.S. federal census record search. We've got a uh, website for that on the blog, 1930census.com. And number four, the Australian Family History Directory. Now, that should be inter interesting to all you folks in Australia, and there's plenty of you out there. I hear more and more from you every day. Uh, now we're going to move on to everybody's favorite, the end of the day, Curious News and Notes. Well, number one, Roger Connor was uh, the home run champ before Babe Ruth. And that, of course, was in baseball. So I don't know how many of you knew that, but uh, that is the truth. And number two, I told you about those nine-year-olds that have cell phones and TV. Well, half of those nine-year-olds have cell phones and TVs. That's sort of surprising, but then cell phones are perhaps a little more needed in some of those areas, undeveloped areas of Ireland, if there's any of those areas left. Uh, number three, Old Irish Harp Salvage from Trash Heap by Julie Finch. And you know what? You'd be walking around in New York and you see somebody just dumped an old piece of wood. It looks like a harp. If you took a second second look at it, you say, my gosh, that looks like something important. And you find out it's, it's probably worth thousands of dollars. It's 200 years old. I bet they're polishing it up right now. And uh, you know what? I wouldn't talk too loud about this. Those old owners may say, well, that just slipped in the trash by accident. Give it back after you've done all that work restoring it. Uh, but I've got a link on the blog. That was from Irish Central, our friends there at irishcentral.com. Uh, number four. The Halifax Public Library rec recommends Terence M. Punch's Aaron Sons, Irish Arrivals in Atlantic Canada, 1761 to 1853. That's a two-volume set of books, and uh, they're recommending it. So that's for you folks in Canada. That might be of interest. Number five, uh, blog entry about the LDS. We found that at... Uh, uh, of course, the, that, that's the FamilySearch.org is what they're talking about. And uh, we found a blog entry about that. So if you're uh, just starting your search or want to learn about how to search on that website, check that link out on the blog. Uh, number six, Muhammad Ali descends from Grady of County Clare. And he's making a visit to County Clare. And gosh, I think I reported on that maybe all the way back 20 years ago and... Uh, uh, now people have just rediscovered that Muhammad Ali descended from a Grady of County Clare. You know, I know some Grady's of County Clare. I'll have to remind myself never to get into a fight with any of them. They probably got a good bloodline there. I'd hate to make an accident or even jokingly make an accident, and they would uh, they might take me to task for it all. Well, let me see. Just one more. Uh, hey, don't forget the Montana Irish Festival next year. I just had a contact on that. And they say that's in Uptown Butte, Montana, August 7th, 8th, and 9th uh, were the dates for it this year. And kids under 12 were free. And I've got a link for that. And I've also got their uh, email. And uh, they also held an Irish language immersion weekend in Butte, Montana last February. And that's where you go up there and everything you speak is going to be in the Irish language. And it sure is a quick way to learn. You know what? You learn or you starve. Uh, <laughs> that's a tough way to go. Hey, but remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at www.irishroots.com or send by mail to our American address at the Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360. And you know you can Skype me, and my blog has my address on MySpace and Facebook and Twitter and the Irish Central blog. And just remember one more thing. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Thank <laughs> you.